Hi guys, how we doing? So I'm Matty from Clearway Collectibles and in this video we're going to talk about how to invest into the Pokemon card hobby. Right, so let's just get straight into it. The first thing to understand is there are a bunch of different paths that we can go down. Now I've broken it into three different main sorts of paths and on those three main paths you've got a million different avenues that you can go down. The first one would be vintage. The second one would be modern. And the third one would be Japanese. In these three, like I said before, you've got a million different routes that you can take. So this is where your love for the hobby should kick in, right? So this is just a really quick disclaimer as well before we continue on in the video. If you've got no interest in Pokemon in the hobby and you just think that you can just come in and make a quick buck and buy whatever and then sell it on and make a profit, you're gonna realize really quickly that's just not how it works. If that's sort of what you're interested in, just stop watching the video and move on. But if you do enjoy the hobby, if you do love buying products, opening stuff, keeping hold of stuff, then stick around because in this video, I'm just going to go over a few points, sort of what I do and what's working for me at the moment. Right. So now that the disclaimer is over, what we need to just make sure in point one is we figure out what it is that we love, what it is that we want to collect and invest in in the Pokemon hobby. Once we figured that out, once we found out, okay, yeah, so I want to collect Japanese sealed booster boxes or vintage English set that I love. I want to collect the cards and that. Or it might be what I do and that is Japanese, modern, or that have like really strong cards in the set as well. For example, like Tag Team GX, which is my ultimate favorite set. You've got more modern sets now, like Starbirth, VMAX Climax, which is a massive one that has just been released as well. With massive chase cards in, that's sort of the sets that I like to invest in. So now that we've figured out from point one what it is that we want to collect, what it is that we want to invest in, because it's something that we love and we want to have more of, or we don't want to miss out, or whatever it might be, it leads us on to the second point, and that is FOMO. So when it comes to FOMO in the hobby and in wanting to buy and invest, You've kind of got to understand a few things. And I think the first point in FOMO is checking when the set was released. That's one of the first things. If it's modern and it's only been released, let's say like for example, this year, you know, you've got a couple of years before it might be out of print. If it's English, if it's Japanese, I would always give it at least a year because one of the best examples was Eevee Heroes. Now, I remember that was released this time last year and people for the last couple of months were like, oh, there's no reprint, no reprint. Like prices skyrocketed then he announced a reprint and now you can get the boxes a bit cheaper than what you could have maybe two three months ago so once you've figured out when the set was released whether it be vintage modern whatever it might be then sort of figure out okay yeah how much of that set has actually been printed some sets actually have shorter print runs than others some have quite large reprints so for example like english always have a lot of reprints they're very very saturated in the modern english sort of departments that's why i don't really go into that and the quality controls pretty crap as well so when it comes to japanese i normally look at it as about maybe two years max a year and a half i look at it and um, again you can always go back and reprint it after a year and a half wherever but because there's so many sets getting released i feel like they only they give it maybe like a year and a half two at max and then they cut the print run off and that's it so normally for japanese i'd say about two years and then when it comes to vintage it's obvious you're not really going to be getting any reprints at all when it comes to vintage stuff so that's just going to be more on how much is available how much of that set was actually printed at the time and how much is actually available on the open market on ebay and whatever it might be that you buy from so if you decide that now is the right time to buy whatever set whatever cards whatever it is that you want to collect and invest in into the pokemon hobby then you've got to make sure how much it is you want to put into it and making sure that you also don't over leverage yourself as well you never want to go fully in on one set and put all your money into one thing and not have a backup for anything else or for your own personal needs. So you always want to make sure you're just putting in enough to what you feel comfortable with putting in. Another thing is just figuring out, is this going to be a long-term hold? Is this going to be something that you just keep hold of for the rest of your life? Or is it going to be like a short to medium term? Is it going to be something that you think, you know what, actually these might go up like quite quickly. I'll grab a bunch and then sell them in the next couple of months, whatever it might be. Also, think about that as well. Think about what, how long your sort of investment hold is going to be for. So I personally invest for the long term. 
and that meaning probably about five to ten years my sort of plans with these things a lot of the sets i mean to be honest i don't even know if i'm gonna end up selling some of the stuff but a lot of it is stuff that i want to keep hold of maybe sell a bunch of stuff to maybe pay and keep hold of other things so technically I've basically got a lot of my collection stuff for free because they pay for themselves, which would be amazing. But at the end of the day, it's your choice. You've got to make your own decisions with this. I'm here just sort of letting you know what I do. It's not financial advice at all. It's just sort of what I'm doing in, in regards to investing and what I think sort of works or what you need to maybe understand before you do put any money into the hobby. So last thing is patience. When it comes to patience, it's making sure that, you know, you don't check the prices on what it is that you've got every week. I am guilty of it sometimes. Sometimes I do like to just see sort of where, you know, the markets might be in regards to prices on boxes or single cards or whatever. But just be very, very patient. Um, at the end of the day, the hobby isn't like, you know, a really buy this now, sell it straight away and then, you know, 10 extra money. A lot of the time it's a patience game. It's slow rolling it. It's just making sure you're collecting what you love, you're holding on to what you love. And then at some point when you think, you know what, I want to make room for something new or for something else, then you can look to sell it and stuff as well. But if you are doing short term flips as well, again, patience, you're going to need patience because the market might not be in your favor at that time. But if you are patient, it'll get to a point where, you know what, okay, yeah, the price has gone up again now, or the prices are at a point where I think, you know what, I can sell this maybe break even and be able to get something else so always just make sure you apply patience in your investments so to recap all of the points that we've went over in this video overall the first and the main one is find what you love and you want to collect and invest in that's one of the biggest points there is. You've got to love it. You've got to enjoy it. You've got to want to buy this stuff because you've got to, at the end of the day, you've got to keep hold of it. It's yours. And if it doesn't go up, you want to be stuck with something that you at least enjoy. And then if it goes to zero, you've got something that you can at least open in the future and have fun with. As there's just no point in buying something if you don't even enjoy having it or enjoy owning it. So just to recap, point number two is do your research. Research on eBay, card market, whatever it might be, TCG player. It's just one of those. Just do your research. Make sure that you put a little bit of time in because it'll pay off in the long term if you just do your own little independent research. And look for the things that I've mentioned in this video. Just another point to add on to point number two recap is just don't over leverage yourself. That's a big point as well. Just make sure you've got some money there saved up for a rainy day, for personal expenses, but also for any other stuff that you might want to invest in as well in the future. And the last point was just patience, what we went over before. At the end of the day, the markets sometimes will not look pretty. Right now, they might not look pretty for certain people, but for other people, it might look amazing. So it's just about being patient, making sure that you try not to time the highs and the lows and you just figure out, you know, when it's going to be best for you to sell or to buy. But if you implement these points that I've mentioned in this video, it might help you point you in the right direction of sort of where to go or to sort of make better decisions on building a collection and investment that you love in the Pokemon hobby. So that's the end of the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content. And also leave a comment down below what it is that you're buying, investing, collecting. And I'll see you in the next one.